Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday to you. So I have been singing a song in my head all week, the same song, over and over and over again. And if you have looked at the title of the message, you might get a hint as to what song that is. When it came time to decide on a title, I was like, well, obviously that has to be it. So if you will indulge me for just a moment, and if you feel so inclined, you can sing along. Because this is the song that has been in my head all week. It goes, only a boy named David, only a little sling. Only a boy named David, but he could pray and sing. Only a boy named David, only a babbling brook. Only a boy named David, and five little stones he took. And it goes on with the sling, and the giant falls down, and that has been in my head all week. <laughs> I, I, I pass it along to you. May it be your gift this week. <laughs> it's, it's been there. Well, it brings back memories for me about how David was seen through my childlike eyes as a kid. How did you understand this story as a child? Because I was fascinated by the thought of this little slingshot, I'm thinking like Dennis the Menace style slingshot, took down this huge giant, and it was a Sunday morning superhero story. But that was about it. It wasn't a message about faith for me as a kid. It was just, go David, you're so strong. So today, we are going to read the majority of the David and Goliath text out loud, but I am making a bit of a change from what is in your text. I have given to you in the bulletin the NIV text, something that many of us probably were familiar with growing up, and that is there for your reference. That is the familiar. But I'm going to be using today the version from the message and I'm going to be layering it in with my commentary. Um, so we're not going to read it all at once. It's going to be little chunks at a time. Because this is an excellent story. And it deserves time and attention to all the different details as they come. So, Sunday story time. Let's pray before we begin. God, may we be enthusiastic listeners to you and your word today. I ask that you would speak clearly to us. Let us listen attentively, boldly, with enthusiasm, as we did as children. May we hear with mature ears the message that you have for us today, whether these are in words that are spoken aloud, or whether they are words that you speak silently to us in our hearts. Amen. Well, only a boy named David that's, that's hardly even a thing, because this boy was anointed to be king by Saul. Not Saul, Samuel. Let's not talk about Saul yet. By Samuel. He was a priest. He was a prophet. He was a judge. David knew that he had been anointed. His father knew he had been anointed, and so had his brothers. They'd all been there. They'd seen it. And when that anointing, the Spirit of God came upon David, so that wherever he went, whatever he did, the Spirit was with him, prompting him. And David was learning to listen to God's voice. In his days as a shepherd, silence and solitude, he was practicing, experiencing the presence of God, hearing the voice of God, and tuning his heart to that voice. This opportunity to learn to discern the voice of God set David up so well to be a leader of the people of God. So it was during that time that the Philistines drew up their troops for battle. Saul and the Israelites came together, camped at Oak Valley, and spread out their troops in battle readiness for the Philistines. The Philistines were on one hill, the Israelites on the opposing hill, with the valley between them. And a giant, nearly 10 feet tall, stepped out from the Philistine line into the open, Goliath from Gath. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he was dressed in armor, 126 pounds of it. He wore bronze shin guards and carried a bronze sword, and his spear was like a fence rail. The spear tip alone weighed over 15 pounds. His shield bearer walked ahead of him. 
Goliath stood there and called out to the Israelite troops, Why bother using your whole army? Am I not Philistine enough for you? And you're all committed to Saul, aren't you? So pick your best fighter and pit him against me. If he gets the upper hand and kills me, the Philistines will all become your slaves. But if I get the upper hand and kill him, you'll all become our slaves and serve us. I challenge the troops of Israel this day. Give me a man. Let us fight it out together. When Saul and his troops heard the Philistines challenge, they were terrified and lost all hope. Enter David. He was the son of Jesse the Ephrathite from Bethlehem in Judah. Jesse, the father of eight sons, was himself too old to join Saul's army. Jesse's three older sons had followed Saul to war. And while his three oldest brothers went to war with Saul, David went back and forth from attending to Saul to tending his father's sheep in Bethlehem. Each morning and evening for 40 days, Goliath took his stand and made his speech. One day, Jesse told David, his son, take the sack of cracked wheat and these 10 loaves of bread and run them down to your brothers in the camp. Take these 10 wedges of cheese to the captain of their division. Check in on your brothers to see whether they are getting along all right and let me know how they're doing, Saul and your brothers, and all the Israelites in the war with the Philistines in Oak Valley. God's voice was not the only one vying for David's attention. We see him here being directed by his father to run between home and the battle lines. He's an errand boy. And I wonder a bit at this. Was his father seeking to give him some type of normal experience as a kid before his kingship? Or maybe the, his dad was questioning whether the anointing was really going to come to anything at all. Maybe David wasn't something special. Whatever the case, it's clear that he was not eager to push his son into the battle lines as a soldier. And so we see David here listening and following the directions of his father. So David was up at the crack of dawn, and having arranged for someone to tend his flock, took the food and was on his way just as Jesse had directed him. He arrived at camp just as the army was moving into battle formation, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines moved into position, facing each other, battle ready. David left his bundles of food in the care of a century, and he ran to the troops who were deployed and greeted his brothers. While they were talking together, the Philistine champion, Goliath of Gath, stepped out from the front lines of the Philistines and gave his usual challenge. David heard him. So David hears this mocking voice of the Philistine champion, Goliath, as it challenges the honor of Israel. And by extension, the God of Israel, whose spirit is upon David. How could David do anything but bristle? If you think about the last time you were truly offended, like somebody just poked you right where it is that you are valued, where you are a purpose, what was that feeling? Where did you feel it? Because for me, it's right here. Heat up into my face. My stomach goes... <laughs> it's a full-body reaction. And I wonder how David reacted. Where did he feel it in his body? Now, those these Philistine taunts were a regular occurrence for the soldiers. David came to this fresh... And Goliath's words, man, they hit their mark. And young David reacts. David, who was talking to the men standing around him, asked, what's in it for the man who kills that Philistine and gets rid of this ugly blot on Israel's honor? Who does he think he is anyway, this uncircumcised Philistine taunting the armies of God alive? They told him what everyone was saying about what the king would do for the man who killed the Philistine. And so now David is listening to the soldiers, and he is intrigued by what they tell him. Eliab, his older brother, heard David fraternizing with the men, and he lost his temper. What are you doing here? Why aren't you minding your own business tending that scrawny flock of sheep? I know what you're up to. You've come down here to see the sights, hoping for a ringside seat at a bloody battle. So Eliab is speaking with contempt toward his little brother. And, you know, are these words words of a grumpy older brother 
an anxious soldier who's trying to redirect some of his feelings. Or maybe it was the jealousy that was showing of an older brother whose little kid brother has been marked for greatness, and it grates on his nerves. Well, David just brushes off the remarks of his brother. What is with you, replied David. All I did was ask a question. Ignoring his brother, he turned to someone else asking the same question and got the same answer as before. And the things David was saying were picked up and reported to Saul. Saul sent for him. So what else David was saying, it's not recorded. We don't know what he was saying, but I tell you, I think he was talking some smack. I think he was speaking out in a way saying that his indignation was maxed out and that he would answer the call. He would be the champion. He was going to do it. And Saul's like, my boy, come here. Master, said David, don't give up hope. I'm ready to go and fight this Philistine. Saul answered David, you can't go and fight this Philistine. You are too young and inexperienced. He's been in this fighting business since before you were born. Now, this voice belongs to the king. And even so, it could not override the prompting of God. Defending his plan, David said, I've been a shepherd tending sheep for my father. Whenever a lion or bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I'd go after it, knock it down, and rescue the lamb. If it turned on me, I'd grab it by the throat, wring its neck, and kill it. Lion or bear made no difference. I killed it. And I'll do the same to this Philistine pig who is taunting the troops of God alive. God who delivered me from the teeth of the lion and the claws of the bear will deliver me from this Philistine. Saul said, go, God help you. Then David took his shepherd's staff, selected five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the pocket of his shepherd's pack and with a sling in his hand, approached Goliath. Now this is the moment. Can you imagine this? This young boy is walking out. The Israelite side, they're kind of like elbowing each other. They see this kid. Can you imagine what his brothers are doing? What his brothers are saying? And the jeering and laughter that's coming from across the valley as David steps forward. Oh, he is righteous anger. The Philistine paced back and forth, his shield bearer in front of him, and he noticed David. He took one look down on him and sneered, a mere boy, apple-cheeked and peach-fuzzed. The Philistine ridiculed David. Am I a dog that you come after me with a stick? And he cursed him by his gods. Come on, said the Philistine. I'll make roadkill of you for the buzzards. I'll turn you into a tasty morsel for the field mice. David answered him, you come at me with sword and spear and battle axe. I come at you in the name of God of the angel armies, the God of Israel's troops, whom you curse and mock. This very day, God is handing you over to me. I'm about to kill you. Cut off your head, serve up your body and the bodies of your Philistine buddies to the crows and the coyotes. The whole earth will know that there is an extraordinary God in Israel, and everyone gathered here will learn that God doesn't save by means of sword or spear. The battle belongs to God, and he is handing you to us on a platter. That roused the Philistine, and he started toward David. David took off from the front line, running toward the Philistine. David reached into his pocket for a stone, slung it, and hit the Philistine hard in the forehead, embedding the stone deeply. And the Philistine crashed, face down in the dirt. That's how David beat the Philistine, with a sling and a stone. He hit him and killed him. No sword for David. Then David ran up to the Philistine and stood over him, pulled the giant sword from its sheath and finished the job by cutting off his head. When the Philistines saw that their great champion was dead, they scattered, running for their lives. All of the voices that called out to David had the potential to shape his actions, his decision-making. His father, brother, the soldiers, Goliath, the king, all of these voices, but those are not the ones that ultimately led him. Instead, it was the Spirit of God. 
He was familiar with God's presence and prompting, taking what many thought was reckless action, teenage bravado. But David had confidence in a God that he had practiced listening to. It was not just that he had slain bears and lions and had great sling skills, though I'm sure that helped. He was confident in his God. So there's a Casting Crown song that comes from the early 2000s. You may be familiar with it. Um, Voice of Truth. It's been one of the most influential songs of my faith. And the second verse is a reference to David and Goliath. And it says, Oh, what I would do to have the kind of strength it takes to stand before a giant with just a sling and a stone. Surrounded by the sound of a thousand warriors shaking in their armor, wishing they'd have had the strength to stand. But the giant's calling out my name, and he laughs at me, reminding me of all the times I've tried before and failed. The giant keeps on telling me time and time again, boy, you will never win. You'll never win. But the voice of truth tells me a different story. The voice of truth says, do not be afraid. The voice of truth says, this is for my glory. Out of all the voices calling out to me, I will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth. Oh, that we have the confidence of David. Grounded and not in things of this world, not our own abilities and talents, but solely in the strength of our God and his perfectly planned outcomes that bring him glory and help multitudes to see that he is a God who knows them, loves them, and is going to move and act in their lives. We all have voices calling out to us. At times, it's a voice like the brother Eliab, scoffing at your God-given hopes and dreams. Others, it's like King Saul saying, you're too young, you're too inexperienced to do the things that you feel God has called you to do. We even at times do confront Goliath, people using their words to tear at our identity, trying to question who God made us to be. And in the midst of all of that, we can have confidence that the voice of truth is also speaking. The Spirit of God is making himself known and prompting us in the ways to walk and speak, act, and even sit quietly. We are able to act with the boldness of David, equipped with the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit. We get to choose who we listen to. David listened to many voices, but he did not believe they all spoke the truth. And the voice that assailed him with words that challenged the honor of God, he didn't like it. He took a stand. We can learn something profound about discernment from David and the strength that comes from following God's lead. We must seek to tune our ears and hearts to the voice of the Lord through prayer, through scripture like we've read today, music like we continue to join together in, and silence and solitude, just like a shepherd, and many other spiritual practices. Because of his faith, only a boy named David knew that the battle was not his. It belonged to the Lord. Amen.